Welcome everybody, this is Wargamer Sean. I'm here to bring you a video of the 8th edition Necron Codex. Yay! Um, I'm hoping this video is able to be timed to be put up on Saturday early morning so that it can that you can view it uh, when the pre-orders come up for uh, the Necron Codex. Um, this video, I'm going to break these up because I'm going to kind of cover... Um, more things extensively than I have in previous codex reviews where we've done it as part of the podcast. We're going to cover as part of the pod cop bleh, podcast too, but uh, I wanted to kind of go into more detail uh, with the Necron Codex. So this video is going to be kind of about special rules and you know command points, stuff like that, and then we'll break them down into going through like HQs, troops, uh, fast attack, heavy support, that sort of thing. Um, so let's get started. The like everything in um, Eighth Edition, they're getting the keywords now. In this one, instead of like a certain craft world like Eldar, it's Dynasty, and you have to choose the Dynasty keyword. And if you basically match that keyword in basically dynastic codes, then you get the special rules for specific dynasties. There are a few that don't count, so if you include them in your list, they don't count towards um, whether or not you get the, they're all from the same dynasty, and that's uh, Anarcher the Tra Traveler, Illuminar Caesar Caesaris, and Triarch Praetorians, Triarch Stalkers, and Satan Shard units. None of those count, so you can include those and still be from a specific dynasty. Uh, they also have uh, their number is Legion, their name is Death, and basically that's the Necron detachment. All troops basically gain the, uh, you know, the base basically gain the ability that they can control an objective. Um, even if another person has a, uh, your enemy has a unit that's with more numbers close by, unless they also have a similar, basically, uh, rule. So it's kind of like objective secured. I honestly wish they would just use that for each list because it would just be easier than having a special name for everything. But that's that's the way GW is doing it this, this edition. Um, now, um, the special abilities... Um, one of the special abilities is Living Metal, and at the beginning of your turn, this unit regains one lost wound, so that's pretty cool. And then let's go into the um, Dynastic Codes. They have rules for five different dynasties, and we'll go through each of them. Um, there's the Sotek uh, Dynasty, which is a Relentless Advance. And if a unit with this code advances, it treats all ranged weapons as if they were assault weapons until the end of the turn. Example, Rapid Fire 1 is treated as Assault 1. Heavy D6 is treated as Assault D6. In addition, unless it has advanced this turn, a unit with this code does not suffer the penalty to hit uh, um, rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. So it's kind of a separate thing. So if you advance, everything you have becomes assault. So you're able to shoot even if you advance, but it's still minus one to hit with it. Now the, but the other rule, it's separate. It's a separate sentence. If it didn't advance, um, everything they can shoot everything without having the penalty of moving and firing heavy weapons, which is pretty pretty big. So. Which is good, and then they could still fire because they advance. The heavy becomes assault, so they can still shoot at minus one bliss skill if they advance. So that's pretty good, especially since Necrons tend to have a lot of their weapons are shorter range, like 24 inches or less, and so sometimes being able to move more is a good thing, so they can get into range for shooting because a lot of them only move five inches, a lot of the infantry, and so they're kind of slow. So. Um, the Mefrit, which is the dynasty that I play, and I'm very excited that they got rules for, um, that each time a model with this code shoots an enemy unit that is within half range of its weapon's maximum range, the armor penetration characters of the weapon attack is improved by one. For example, if it's zero, it becomes a minus one for armor penetration, or if it's minus one, it becomes a minus two, etc. So that's actually pretty nice, especially think about heavy destroyers that have like a 36 inch range. Now suddenly at half range, you're you're getting another minus one. Although 
that weapon already has minus <laughs> a big minuses anyway but even with like let's say rapid fire like gauze weapons like the normal uh, troop the normal warriors they have a 24 inch rapid fire so they're within 12 inches it's not only minus one now it's minus two which is a big deal even minus one in this edition really helps you know hurt or do wounds to a unit so anything helps i think that's a good one um, the Novak, it's N-O-V-O-K-H, Awakened by Murder, yep, that's it. Um, you can reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase um, with units with this code if they charged, were charged, or perform, performed a heroic intervention. So that's cool for close combat with these guys. And then the Nihilak, um, aggressively territorial. You can reroll hit rolls of one for units with this code whenever they shoot, including when firing Overwatch, as long as they did not move in the preceding movement phase and they have not disembarked from a transport. So that that has its uses, although um, you know that could that you know it's it's kind of got its uh, niche uh, as far as when it's going to be used. The um, Nefrek, uh, N-E-P-H-R-E-K-H, and I'm sorry if I'm screwing this up, uh, translocation beams. If a unit with this code advances, add six inches to the move characteristics for that movement instead of rolling a dice. If they are affected by my will be done or wave command ability, add seven instead of six because they get an extra inch for it. In addition, if a unit with this code advances, its models can still... Um, across uh, the models can go across terrain as if they were not there or other models so they can advance and move over other models which is good sorry i kind of screwed that one up there um the stratagems and there's a lot of stratagems there's some really good ones for them that really help them and i, I think every army benefits from it this is going to help make the necrons a better uh codex because they're you know basically they're you know they're getting these command points that they really didn't have before um they you can do enhanced reanimation protocols um so you can re-roll rolls of one that turn for a unit that's two command points um there's a lot of different ones I don't, i'm not going to go through the, all of them but i really like the um resurrection protocols if a necron character from your army excluding trays and the infinite and satan, satan shards is slain at the end of that phase roll a d6 on a four plus set the character up again as close as possible to the previous position and more than one inch away from the enemy model with one wound remaining this stratagem cannot be used to resurrect the same model more than once per battle but that's still really big let's say you know you don't want to give up warlord or you want your warlord to live and it's it's your enemy's close combat attack and so you get him to live and he's alive so then you go in your next turn now most of these characters have living metals so they're going to get one wound back so they're going to go up to two or if they have a phylactery they get d3 back so you have a potential to get back up to four wounds if, if they have that um so it's a really powerful one and even though it's only one use it's a really good way of keeping your warlord alive or a character alive you really need to it's only one command point too now you need a four up to get it done but think about this you can use a command point to do this if you fail you can use a reroll if you haven't used a reroll command point yet so there's a half you know more than a half a chance if you use a reroll to get it so i think it's a pretty good one um let's see um you can use two command points and there's repair subroutines that you can give a unit of canoptic so like you know wraiths or spiders or the, um, the scarabs and they can get reanimation protocols that until the end of your turn that's pretty good um there's another really good one uh, it's one command point self-destruction if a canoptic scarab unit piles in um but before they make the close combat attacks you can basically sacrifice the command swarm or scarab swarm uh, and if they're within one inch of a unit you pick it up and then they basically, on a D6 roll of 2 plus, they do D3 mortal wounds to the you know the thing that's there. So it's a kind of a neat way 
let's say you're trying to get a character that doesn't have very many wounds left or you know work on something or let's say you're trying to take down a knight and you've got a bunch of scarabs there already but they're only wounding on fives um which we'll get to in a second, but that's still better because they're only strength three. But this is a guaranteed D3 mortal wounds for losing one base. And let's say one's already got a wound on it anyway. You know, who cares? Um, let it go. So, um, Entropic Fight uh, Strike. I like this one. Uh, you can use this in the fight phase before a Necron's character fights. And invulnerable saves cannot be taken for the first close combat attack made by this character. That's a really good one if you're using a War Scythe or Phase Sword and you're going against a tough character that has maybe a 3-up Storm Shield or something like that. It's a good one to use. So I like that. Um, Quantum Deflection. That one, you it's one command point two, but you can use it. And before they start shooting at you, you subtract on rolls for your Quantum Shield by one for any unsaved wound. Or for each unsaved wound. So that's, that's cool. Um, there's a, um, adaptive subroutines that, that's a one command point that you, a canoptic unit can, in the, in the army can advance and still shoot and or charge this turn. It's pretty good. Um, so there's lots of different ones and then there's, there's separate, separate ones for each of the dynasties too. But I think these, uh, command points are really going to be useful for the Necron player. I, I haven't really studied the points yet, but just like, um, uh, you know, with me, with, uh, like Tau and with uh, Thousand Sons, they're kind of a more elite army. So you may not be swimming in command points like you would if you were Imperial Guard or something like that. So we'll have to see how many command points you have, you know, once we start list building. Um, the powers of the Satan, there's six of them, and you can roll for them or you can just uh, generate some, um, but, uh, if you choose to just choose the powers, if you have more than one Satan, you can't duplicate a power until you've used all of them. So, or you can just roll for them. Um, there's Antimony Meteor, um, Cosmic Fire, Time Zero, Seismic Assault, Seismic Assault, uh, Transdimensional Thunderbolt, Sky of, of Falling Stars. And they all have their uses. A lot of them are just ways to give out mortal wounds. So it's kind of the Necron's way of a psychic phase, which is nice. It's something that they have for that, uh, you know, which is, you know, which is nice. Um, there's artifacts, a good amount. And there's also some artifacts that are specific for the dynasties, too. And they'll tell you in there if they basically, in, you know, it what they affect or what they're trading out. We, you have to have the model equipped with this in order to, to basically trade this out for it. So it'll say that. Um, as far as Warlord traits, um, there's six main ones. Enduring will uh, reduce any damage inflicted on your Warlord by one. For example, if you fail the saving zero and it does three damage, then he takes two wounds. Eternal Madness, you can re-roll failed wound rolls for your Warlord in the fight phase if he charged, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention. So that's Eternal Madness. Immortal Pride, uh, friendly dynasty units automatically pass morale tests within six inches of your Warlord. In addition, your Warlord can attempt to deny one psychic power each psychic phase in the same manner as a psyker. That's a really good one. Um, Thrall of the Silent King. Increase the range of all your abilities on your Warlord's data sheet by three inches. So, basically, Catacomb Command Barge has this ability. Um, th this does not apply to its explode ability. Oh, if you do that, okay. Um, sorry. Um, and if a Cryptic with a Canoptic Cloak has this Warlord trait, it does not affect the distance the Cloak allows the model to move in the movement phase. So there's some restrictions to it. Um, so, but it's still nice, like, if you increase the range of all their abilities, you know, like a Cryptek that has a three-inch range for reanimation would now have a six-inch range, so that's still good, it's still good. Implacable Conqueror, you can reroll failed charge rolls for this, for friendly dynasty units within six inches of your Warlord. That's another good one, because, like I said, Necrons aren't that fast. If your Warlord targets the same enemy character... With all their close combat attacks, add D3 to your Warlord's attack characteristics until the end of the phase. That one's kind of a hit or miss one. It's Honorable Combatant. 
if you plan on getting your warlord into combat potentially good i think some of the other ones are a little a little better though um named characters um they have certain warlord traits so um illuminar caesarius is a warlord he has immortal pride War, uh, warlord trait anarch the traveler is your warlord he must have implacable conqueror um let's see imitech the storm is your warlord he is hyperological strategist so there are some named characters that have certain ones. There's also different dynasty ones. So Sotek, um, once per battle, you can reroll a, a failed single hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll made for your warlord. In addition, if your battle is your battle forged, your warlord is on the battlefield. Roll a d6 each time you spend a command point, and on a five up, it's refunded. So that's just for you, you know, just for your command points. But that's a decent one. Um, a freet. Uh, Merciless Tyrant adds six inches to the maximum range of all assault weapons fired by your warlord. In addition, your warlord can shoot assault weapons at enemy characters even if they are not the closest enemy unit. It's okay. Uh, Nihilak, um, your warlord always fights first in the fight site, even fight phase, even if they didn't charge. If your opponent has units that have charged or has a similar ability, then alternate choosing units to fight, starting with the player whose turn it is takes place. Um, Nefrek, uh, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls when they target your warlord. Uh, Navolk, you each time you roll an unmodified hit roll of six in the fight phase, a model in a friendly Novak unit that is within six inches of your warlord may make one additional hit roll, um, for that model with the same weapon against the same target. These additional rolls cannot generate more hit rolls themselves. It was a little complex one, but basically, anybody within the six inches of your warlord, if you roll a six to hit, you get an extra t a chance to attack. Okay, and then we go into points. I'm not going to do that. I do have some special cards um, if you're playing Maelstrom. I, I particularly have kind of gone away from more um, competitive builds, so I do like playing the uh, card uh game just because I, I have fun with it. Um, I think as far as special rules, I might kind of go through some of them while we're going through the individual units. So I think we'll stop here and we'll pick it up on the next video that talks about the HQs. And hopefully you'll join me and hopefully you're enjoying this. I'm trying to kind of get back into doing this like I used to back in 7th edition and 6th edition. I have not I have not done it yet since 8th, and I'm hoping to kind of get back into it. Um, in addition, down the road, I'm planning on, as I've had chances to play games with some of these units, I want to try to see, you know, uh, do some kind of list analysis or list build ideas or strategies for certain armies or certain, like, units, that sort of thing. So until next time, keep on wargaming, guys. Take care. Goodbye, you sexy motherfucker.